This is a basic touched event in Roblox Studio. You connect the actual event to a function using the connect method and everything in here runs perfectly fine, right? Well, did you guys know that you can actually change how the behavior of these events are? You can change the connect signal to all of these. So if we go to once and instead of saying connect, we have once, this makes the function run one time, but in the whole running time, right? It only runs once, it disconnects like the function in the event, and it never runs again in the runtime. So this is basically the same thing as getting a like a connection and then setting a connection equal to the same thing. Make sure you guys can see this a little bit better. Connect function hit. Alright, and then it's basically saying, you know, do do some stuff and then it the connection disconnect and if you want to set it back to nil if you really want to this is basically doing the exact same thing it's just saving you more time because you can just say once very simply so uh, this connect basically you know it's just simple just runs it once runs at one time during its entire life and never runs again and now the next one is called wait and you don't actually use wait as I'm using it here you would say something like game dot workspace dot base plate col uh, dot touched colon wait so what this is saying and what wait does for our events is it basically is it's a method to pause the script until that event basically fires or occurs you know so this is going to wait until the base plate is touched and when it is touched and when we have when the event is fired we're going to get some information back from this and this information is basically the arguments that the event provides so if we say game.workspace.baseplate.touched clone connect function we can see that is this function gives us an other part that is a base part this is basically saying the part that the base plate touched. So we can just define this as hit or whatever, uh, you know, what, whatever you want to name it. And this is one of the examples of what you would get from this. Okay. So we can say game that base plate dot touch colon wait. It's going to wait until this actually runs. But we can also wrap this in a variable called touched part. All right. And then we're going to print it touched part. And basically what would happen is this is going to print the part that touched the base plate because it's going to wait as I said before and when it is touched it's going to give us the arguments that that function returns back to us which would be the part that touched it okay so nothing has happened quite yet because I haven't touched the base plate and I'm going to touch the base plate and it ran and we can see that the part that touched the base plate was my character's humanoid root part, uh, which is the main part of our body. So it waited until it w uh, the event was fired, and then it gave us, you know, whatever it would return back to us. Another example of this is by using run services uh, render stepped method. So I'm going to put this in a local script because run services uh, render step can only ran in a local script. So I'm gonna get run service, and we can say run service dot render stepped colon wait. Now this is pretty much task dot wait, pretty much. But there's a small difference uh, when it runs in the task scheduler. So right here is saying render stepped wait, and if you know the task scheduler, it's different. And here, let me pull up a picture. So since render stepped in the task is, or is one of the first things this is basically like a wait like task dot wait except task dot wait uh, fires on on every heartbeat so task dot wait it fires on every heartbeat and you can see right here it yields the current thread until the next heartbeat but what this is saying is this will wait until the next render stepped 
Now, there is a, a difference between this because heartbeat in the task scheduler is, you know, farther back and one of the last things to be ran in every frame. But render step is one of the first things to uh, be, you know, fired and everything like that every frame because, you know, user input is like the first thing and then I believe it's render steps and all that stuff. So that is the main difference between if you were to use task out weight and also render step so i think if you were to use heartbeat coin weight probably be the same thing as task out weight and then there is the last one which we will see workspace dot base plate uh dots actually probably should have you know put this up earlier but we can just say connect and then i got to get it okay so connect the last one is connect parallel and basically, this has to do with Parallel UAU in Roblox. Now, if you don't know what Parallel is, it's basically how you can actually run two threads on separate CPUs uh, so it's a lot faster. Now, we have something like Coroutines and, you know, Task.Spawn and stuff like that. But these spawn functions and Coroutines and stuff like that is actually not being ran in Parallel. It's not running on different CPU cores, and I actually have a video coming up uh, addressing this about which one is different. Stay tuned for that video, but these are not actually running different threads. You know, it's still in the same script, but parallel is a lot different because it is actually in parallel. And it's actually a lot faster because, as I said, it's running on different cores. Basically, these give the impression of running in parallel, but they are just still being resumed at one at a time by the task scheduler. And this is mainly used in run service uh, events because you would usually be running a lot of stuff in run service and you'd want to split that work. Uh, that is the whole reason we have these parallel things is we can split a very demanding task like generating terrain uh, between our CPU cores to speed the process up. If we were to do this in task.spawn, wouldn't work as well because it is it's not do, it does not do the same effect as what connect parallel and the parallel things do. Now if you were you know you'd have to have a little bit of knowledge of how this worked but I'm gonna put this script in an actor and basically if we had our run service and we said run service dot renders uh, heartbeat heartbeat I'm gonna say heartbeat connect parallel function this is basically the same thing as saying run service dot heartbeat connect function and off rip just saying task dot desynchronize which is basically this function puts your script and do parallel and not serial um, so that's basically they're doing the same thing again connect parallel just you can just attach it on the event you don't have to do any other thing basically the same thing and you have to do this in an actor because actors are the only way that you can run scripts uh, and transfer them to parallel and change them back to uh, regular serial coding. And if you guys don't really know what I'm talking about, I recommend you guys go watch uh, videos on actors, uh, my, the micro profiler, and how this the whole parallel thing kind of works. Because uh, this requires some background knowledge of all this, all these parallel things and how different threads run on different cores and stuff like that before you actually try to experience what this uh, method right here and yeah guys this was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button and the subscribe button i'll see you guys in the next video peace